What do y'all call them? You say goad or gonad or god or god? Is that what y'all say? <laughs> hey, wait. Hold on, let me get this straight. So you motherfuckers, you think there's some invisible man in the clouds staring down on all of us, judging every fucking thing that we do. Is that what you tell me? That's how true love works. <laughs> um, the actual festival was about fertility. And so if you got smacked, if you was pregnant, you got smacked by this uh, goat skin. You want to get smacked because that means that your pregnancy would be healthy. Also fertility. So if you was a young woman, you'd want to get smacked with it so that way you would be able to bear children. So that's Valentine's Day, right? So that's... Celebration of sadistic masochism. There's uh, even um, uh, Mark Anthony was part of this uh, fucking festival and he tried to crown Caesar and the people said no, no. And he was trying to be humble and rejected it. No, I don't want it. No, I don't want it. Um, but that was Mark Anthony was naked in the Lupercalia festival uh, in Shakespeare. So there's a literature connection. So, so okay, so now, now do I, I don't know how many times I have to explain Christmas to you, okay? So I've been talking about Christmas now. To understand Christmas, you got to start from the beginning with Socrates, right? So Socrates was fucking Plato, right, as a boy. And then Plato carried on that tradition of pedophilia to uh, Aristotle. And so Aristotle's being fucked as a boy, right, by Plato. And then Aristotle carries on that sacred Roman tradition uh, and starts fucking Alexander the Great. And Alexander is a great uh, as a boy. And then, you know, with great protest from Demonstheses. Uh, Alexander the Great spread Roman culture all throughout the world. All over Asia. So basically the cornerstone of Western civilization is created by pedophiles. The founding fathers of Western civilization were founded by the pedophiles. Christopher Columbus was a pedophile. Today, Socrates and Plato would be put in prison, but they're known as the cornerstone for Roman culture. So just like America was discovered by a pedophile, Christopher Columbus, right? Mass murder and oppressive pedophile coming straight from the Spanish Inquisition. Um, and we got a Columbus Day in the capital city of Ohio is Columbus because, you know, we worship these fucking mass murdering psychopaths. The ancient Romans like fucking children and so Saturnalia was one of these days. It was a drunken, pedophilic, homosexual, heterosexual orgy during Roman Empire times. So the entire day was it's the orgy of orgies, right? Um, just debauchery, they closed the courts down and really any crime could be committed. And so, I guess everybody just had to fucking watch their back, right? Anarchy. It was in December around Jesus Christ's birthday and a hundred other gods' birthday on December 25th that Jesus shares with, you know, a hundred different other gods. Uh, 33 years beforehand, Jesus Christ was born in a manger in Bethlehem in Israel. Okay, so follow along here. 2,000 years ago, because his mother and stepfather couldn't find an inn for her to give birth and because King Herod was murdering all the baby boys in his Roman kingdom because he was afraid of the Messiah Jesus Christ of being born. And so actually in a way, King Herod's suspicions were correct because a Messiah was born, uh, Jesus Christ. So that's why he's murdering all these baby boys. So it's not exactly as crazy as one might think. Um, God got Mary's consent. Well, n not actually. He sent three fucking warners to say that she was about to get pregnant. So he never got consent but you know what what does consent matter right god you dirty dirty dog and so mary gets pregnant immaculately immaculately which means she's perfectly pregnant okay now it makes sense let me just explain okay so jesus christ is born and then all humanity is saved he didn't cure cancer stop war but he would later on die when he was 30 years old 33 years old on the cross um because the jews really didn't like their king um the pontius pilate gave them a clear choice right so it wasn't the romans the romans didn't kill jesus don't don't look behind the words on that okay the roman empire embraced christianity um the jews were the ones that said yeah kill him crucify him crucify him right <laughs> um no, it was really the romans okay so and then later on jesus said he did it for us and we believed him because of faith the bible says it's true and we're gullible and we believe anything anybody ever says because people are honest uh, i mean why would people lie what would be the point so 
King Herod's murdering all the baby boys, right? So just flat out in finicide, which wasn't a popular decision. It didn't help with his election campaign. I mean, murdering all the baby boys in the Roman Empire, uh, except for those who had sheep's blood on their door. Because anybody that had sheep's blood on their door, that really creeped the Roman soldiers out. They didn't understand that. Uh, but that's known as Passover. So the Jews started celebrating this during the springtime. Catholics were jealous, so they started celebrating their own Passover, called it Lent. And they stole the 40 days of the weeping for Tammuz. Okay. So Christmas comes from Saturnalia. And Jesus is a Jew who is born. And all of humanity is saved. There's three kings who follow a star. You got a little drummer boy. Jesus got mad two times. He wants to use a bullwhip to get the capitalist out of the church. Another time he ordered God to kill a fig tree for really no apparent reason. And that's why we celebrate December 25th as the birth of Jesus Christ right <laughs> okay because um, all that you know that all that's logical right all that totally makes sense uh, December 25th happens to be the birth of the Sun for the cult of Sol Invictus which even Marcus Aurelius practice it was canonized into Roman law right so a lot of Romans this is like one of the main competing religions of the day the cult of Sol Invictus other popular and well-known gods also conspicuously born on December 25th, the same day that sweet baby Jesus was born. So all the gods that were born on December 25th are as follows. You have sun gods Horus, Mithras, Greek god Dionysus, the son of Zeus, Sargon, Perseus, Attis, Apollo, Bacchus, Helios, Jupiter, Krishna, Nimrod, Temuz, Sol Invictus, um, the unconquered sun, Buddha, Hercules, Prometheus, Hermes, Heracles, and Bedou. B-E-D-D-O-U. So just 22 other gods was born on the exact same day that Jesus Christ uh, was born. So what a weird coincidence. Obviously, I've heard that most people are born on Je December 25th. So that's not a really that big of a coincidence since, you know, Jesus, um, he's, he's most, you know, he's an everyman, right? He's like most people. So there's nothing that actually backs up that he was born that day. But who gives a shit? Some pope said that's the day and we went along with it. And we've been celebrating it ever since. It covered up the debauchery and disgusting fucking practices of Saturnalia. And the Catholic Church was able to co-opt that pagan festival into their, uh, their own fucking holidays. And holidays, right, holy days, it all comes from the church. There's no such thing as like a scientific holiday. Even though there should be. Let's just be... Holy days for the scientific community. Things, the discovery of gravity, right? That would be a holy day. Einstein's birthday. Um, that would be a holy day, right? So, and actually the Protestants disagree with all these uh, holy days. Fred Phelps, he thinks you're going to hell if you celebrate any of these because they're Catholic pagan holidays and the Protestants knows what's up and they know that all this shit, anybody who practices this shit is going to go straight to hell. So, if you got some Protestant friends, you probably want to bring that up one day. You know, hey, I'm celebrating Christmas this year. Um, am I going to hell? <laughs> so, okay. So, okay, the uh, people that were born on December 25th is the sun gods Horus, Mithras, Greek god Dionysus, son of Zeus, um, Sargon, Perseus, Attis, Apollo, Bacchus, Helios, Jupiter, Krishna, Nimrod, Tammuz, Sol Invictus, Buddha, Hercules, Quetzalcoatl, Prometheus, Hermes, Heracles, and Bedal. B E D D O U. Heracles, H E R A C L E S. So, on the night of December 25th, this is only after the kids go to sleep, right? They can never actually see this shit happening. Um, just like how America goes to sleep with the whole uh, war crimes of their empire, there's a big fat jolly man with a long white father time beard, right? It's incredible how. The, the characteristics of Santa and Father Saturn are, are nearly identical, right? Father Saturn have lots of imagery in common. Father Saturn's an old man with a long white beard, just like Santa Claus, surrounded by children, just like Santa Claus. Um, actually, Saturn, uh, Father Saturn is old father time, and then the newborn baby is the new year. So the Romans would use child sacrifice to bring in the new year. The children were heavily veiled so that their parents wouldn't be able to recognize them. And Saturn also had a Sith or a sickle, so just like the Grim Reaper. So it's not really 
all like Santa. It's more like Krampus, right? The evil Santa. Our Santa Claus is fat and jolly. He's got rosy red cheeks, wearing a big red uh, and white jumpsuit. It's real fat, right? Jolly, right? Did I mention these two things. He's got a red hat, drinking Coca-Cola, riding a big red sleigh in the sky with eight wild white-tailed uh, reindeer and one in the front. It's got a night, uh, light bulb for a nose who lands on every person's rooftop and gives all the good boys and girls presents. Which he puts underneath dying and rotting evergreen trees in the living rooms after he break and uh, breaks and enters your unsecure home, which clearly has several security breaches. Right, if that whole fucking reindeer, uh, you know, um, outfit could land on your fucking ceiling and he could jump in your uh, chimney and put all these presents down, was able to slip all the presents in through the chimney. Uh, then once he's in there, eats all your cookies, drinks all your milk, then he slips out, supposedly undetected, right? The kids never see any of this stuff. They're sleeping, then he goes back to the North Pole, his toy factory, where he's got a shit ton of elves, where he's really, they're slaves, right? Like, real life elf slaves, thousands of them, of them not being free with their elvish personalities and magical powers, um, you know, making lucky charms, or wait, that's, uh, leprechauns, never mind. Elves are um, Keebler elves, right, making the cookies. Instead, they're confined like cows being impregnated just so they can be milked for the rest of their lives, making all the children of the world as much shit as they need. They got poor working conditions. There's no union, no solidarity, making iPads, iPhones, Xboxes, PlayStation 3s, Androids, TVs, and, uh, you know, the necessities, right, that every human needs uh, that the kids happen to tell their parents in the letter they wrote to Santa, which the parents went ahead and mailed, or they mailed it to a city named Santa Claus, right, and then they just kind of laughed about it and threw it away. So that that's what happens, you know, if you're a good Christian who, who lives in America, but if you're not a Christian who lives in America, then... <laughs> Santa doesn't give a shit about you. He's not going to visit you. There's no presents going to be put under your tree. You get nothing. You know, you're not a Christian. And God really hates people who aren't Christians, okay? So, do you understand it now? Does it does it make sense? Do I have to explain all this shit to you again? I mean, I could start... Okay, so you got Dionysus, right? He's a god himself. and He's always caught riding in chariots because he loves chariots. And... Usually lions or tigers are the ones who lead in the way. Sometimes they're attended by a bearded, drunken silliness, right? A bearded, drunken silliness. So here's a, um, you know, a, a Templar. Dionysus wears the basaurus or fox skin, symbolizing new life. Dionysus is represented by city religions as a protector of those who do not belong in conventional society. And thus symbolizes everything which is chaotic, dangerous, and unexpected. Everything which escapes human reason and which can only be attributed to the unforeseeable action of the gods. He is also known as Bacchus, or Bacchus, the name adopted by the Romans in the frenzy he induces, Bacchia. He is also called Eleutherios, the liberator whose wine, music, and ecstatic dance frees his followers from self-conscious fear and care and subverts the oppressive restraints of the powerful. In Greek mythology, Dionysus is represented as the son of Zeus and the mortal Semele, thus semi-divine or heroic, and as the son of Zeus and Persephone, or Demeter, both fully divine. Dionysus was born on December 25th. Zeus appeared in thunder and lightning and gave premier, uh, premature birth, saved the child from the flames. There's a Yule log. Lights on the house shows the neighbors were engaged in Yule Log rituals. Dies Natalis, the soul Invictus is the birthday of the unconquerable son. Saturn, Saturnalia, goddess of success, uh, alcoholism, debauchery, nudity, homosexuality. All kinds, Rome's order was turned upside down. Revoltingly, even children were being used in the orgies. Merge, legally sanctioned form to Christianity. Saturnalia would eventually become Christmas, changing the dates of the Christian, ignoring scripture, confused biblical history, coincide with the pagan god Mithra. Pope Gregory I ordered Augustine of Canterbury. All pagan rituals will be adopted by the Catholic Church. England's version of Saturnalia was called Christ Mass, which is where Christmas comes from, Christ Mass. In 1652, they had tried to outlaw it in England, but in 1656, only outlawed for four years, it comes back. 
uh, stronger than ever. There is open sex in the streets, riots, and sometimes murder, but it was more tame than Saturnalia. More coming up about Christmas.